Hi, today we're going to be going over the gamma function. In this video, I'm going to be explaining the mystery of 1 over 2 factorial and whether this actually is shuffling half a card and how is this related to square root of pi. I'm going to be explaining what the factorial means and deriving why the gamma function is defined as the factorial. So first off, the gamma function is defined as the integral from 0 to infinity of this expression t to the n minus 1 e to the minus t so I plug in an n and I put that n minus 1 onto the exponent of the t here and I evaluate this integral just so happens to be that this equals n minus 1 factorial why is that we're, we're gonna go over that f later but what even is the factorial let's just revise that first well for positive integers keep in mind positive integers, the factorial is defined as the product of all the numbers including itself up until 1. So that means n times n minus 1 times 3 times 2 times 1. So 3 factorial would be 3 times 2 times 1, that would be 6. 2 factorial would be 2 times 1, that would be 2. And 1 factorial, well that's just simply 1. So again, n factorial for positive integers is defined as the product of all the positive integers including itself up to 1. So what is 0 factorial? That might be an interesting question to ask. Note that we define the factorial for positive integers only here. So 0 factorial, well according to our definition there actually has, there is no meaning to 0 factorial but maybe we can extend their definition. First off let's just investigate why the factorial function even is relevant. As it turns out, it's very important for permutations and combinatrics. Assume you have three cards, A, B, C, and you want to shuffle these three cards in some order. How many unique ways are there of doing this? So, well, let's just say I, I have three choices for the first card. So that's three choices here. Now that I've picked one card, let's say A, I have only two choices left. So... That would be two choices for the second position. And now that I pick the second card, let's say C, well, there'd be only one choice left. So that's three choices for the first, second choices for the second, and one choice for the third. And that would be three times two times one, which is actually three factorial choices. And I guess analogously, if you have n cards, n1, n2, dot, 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 up to nn, and if you wanted to shuffle them, where order mattered, there'd be n factorial ways of doing so. So with this definition, can we tackle what zero factorial is? So if I had zero cards and I wanted to shuffle them, how would I do that? Well, I could just leave it as leave it, leave it as it is. That's one way to do it. Because well, if I had two cards, A, B, one way to shuffle it would be to leave it as it is. And the next way would be to reverse it. So I get B, A. If I had the card A, one way to shuffle it would be to leave it as it is. If I had no cards, one way to shuffle it would be to leave it as it is. So that gives us some intuition that perhaps 0 factorial equals 1. Well, that would be one way to extend its definition, but let's investigate n factorial a bit deeply. So n factorial is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 dot 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 up to 3 times 2 times 1. Notice that this expression here, only this expression, well, this is actually n minus 1 factorial. So from there, we get a recurrence relation or a functional equation. n factorial equals n times n minus 1 factorial. If I were to plug in n equals 1 here, that would be 1 factorial equals 1 times 0 factorial, and that would imply 0 factorial equals 1. So from this definition, it does seem to be the case that you can extend the definition of the factorial to zero as well. What about negative integers? What if I plugged in n equals zero here? That would be zero factorial equals zero times minus one factorial. And in other words, one over zero is minus one factorial. That's just nonsense. So it seems to be the case that we can't extend it to minus or sorry, negative integers, but that's okay. Let's let's study 
fractional numbers or fractions for that the gamma function would be quite helpful now I know what you might be wondering well this this whole integral just came out of nowhere but actually it was quite useful back in the day to study and it still is useful to study the integral of f of t times e to the t e to the minus t well nowadays this is known as the Laplace transform of f of t but it's quite it was quite common to consider this integral you see that in your textbooks you might have f of t equals sine of t and this is a normal integration by parts exercise so it was pretty natural to consider the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the n e to the minus t dt. So let's just call this gamma of n. And according to convention, it's supposed to be a t to the n minus 1 here. And you're going to see that soon enough, but it really makes no difference. I'm not sure why the convention is there, but I suppose it's because of gamma of 0. But we're going to go over this later. So when, if I have gamma of n, and I want to evaluate this integral, t to the n minus 1, e to the minus t, dt. Well, I can do this by integration by parts. And if you don't know what integration by parts is, or what the di method is, which I'm going to use, I've linked the video in the description by black pen, red pen, and that explains it quite well. Anyways, integrating by parts, by differentiating t to the n minus 1 and integrating e to the minus c, that would give me n minus 1, t to the n minus 2, minus e to the minus t. Applying the integration by parts formula, I would get that gamma of n equals t to the n minus 1, e to the minus t from 0 to infinity, plus n minus 1 times the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the n minus 2, e to the minus t dt. Now, let's calculate this expression right here. We see that at t equals 0, this is, well, clearly 0. But at as t goes to infinity, what does this approach? t to the n minus 1 over e to the t as t goes to, z as t goes to infinity. Well, we know that the exponential function grows much faster than this polynomial function right here. But you can prove by L'Hopital's rule that this limit is equal to 0. It's quite intuitive as well, so I'll leave that as an exercise for you. But we then get that gamma of n equals n minus 1 times the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the n minus 2 e to the minus t dt. But hey, what is, what is this expression right here? Well, that's just gamma of n minus 1. So from there, I get that gamma of n equals n minus 1 times gamma of n minus 1. And perhaps the mathematicians that were in, that were researching this back in the day, they noticed that this is quite analogous to n factorial's functional equation, namely n factorial equals n minus 1 factorial. Perhaps they're related in some way. Let's, let's investigate gamma of 1. So that would be the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the 1 minus 1, that's just 1, e to the minus t dt. This is a standard integral, and I see that the value of this would be 1. So I have gamma of 1 equals to 1. And if I use the functional equation here, plugging in n equals 2, that would give me gamma of 2 equals 1 times gamma of 1, well that's just 1, that's 1. If I plug in n equals 3, that would mean gamma of 3 equals 2 times gamma of 2, well that's just 1. Well, that's 2 factorial, this is interesting. If I plug in n equals 4, that would mean gamma of 4 equals, that's 3 times gamma of 3, which is 2 factorial. And hey, that's actually 3 factorial. And it's not hard to see that, continuing this argument, gamma of n equals n minus 1 factorial. So, it seems to be the case that, well, I can extend the factorial maybe by just saying, well, gamma of n, this integral right here, which is the, the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the n minus 1 e to the minus t dt, well, that's just n minus 1 factorial for integers, and it actually works for gamma of 1 which is 0 factorial as well so 
non-negative integers it equals to n minus 1 factor for non-negative integers why not just assign the definition of n minus 1 factorial to it itself so that would mean I could calculate gamma of pi that would mean gamma of pi is the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the pi minus 1 e to the minus t dt that's probably an integral that converges in fact it does converge so that would mean pi minus 1 factorial but now we have a conceptual question pi minus 1 factorial according to our definition of factorial would that mean the number of ways of shuffling pi minus 1 cards well if you do try to think of it pi is like 3.14159 something so if I have 2.14159 da, 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 all the way on forever how many ways can I shuffle that card well it doesn't really make sense to think of this so that's because well the shuffling cards analogy it's only for positive integers it doesn't work for these irrational or rational numbers so the gamma function well it can extend the factorial but the shuffling cards thing that that can be extended because well you can't shuffle fractional number of cards an important uh, value for the gamma function is gamma of 1 over 2 that would be the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the minus 1 over 2 e to the minus t dt I can actually substitute square root of t equals u that would mean u squared equals to t and dt over du equals to 2u so the integral here and obviously the limits are going to stay the same so the integral here would be according to our substitution the integral from 0 to infinity of 2u times well that's 1 over u e to the minus u squared du or in other words that's 2 times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus u squared du and hey that's the Gaussian integral I've uh, made a post on solving the Gaussian integral before so if you want to see that you can do it in you can look at the post in the description below but this actually has a value of square root of pi over 2 and when multiplying by 2 that gives me the square root of pi so now I have gamma of 1 over 2 which is minus 1 over 2 factorial according to our extension which is now the square root of pi and now you might be scratching your head like what the hell I have m I actually told this to my friends once when I was new to math that if you have minus 1 over 2 cards there's square root of pi ways of shuffling it and it makes no sense at all that's again because we can extend the factorial of course we can and minus 1 over 2 factorial by definition is a perfectly valid thing to consider but it does not hold the meaning of shuffling cards for irrational or rational numbers that's only for positive integers so another important value of the gamma function is gamma of 3 over 2 and we can actually save ourselves some time because we know what gamma of 1 over 2 is we know by the functional equation that that's equal to 1 over 2 times gamma of 1 over 2 and gamma of 1 over 2 is square root of pi so that's square root of pi over 2 so from there we get that 1 over 2 factorial equals square root of pi over 2 and again this is an interesting result and it's a perfectly valid result if you do put this out anywhere you get full marks because that's completely valid to think of and by the accepted definition of the factorial this makes sense but if you say that well if I had half a card I have square root of pi over 2 ways to, of shuffling it that's gonna give you a big fat zero because the definition the sorry the analogy of shuffling cards it only applies to positive integers this is the same misconception that people have with analytic continuation namely that zeta of minus 1 by analytic continuation would be minus 1 over 12 but that does not actually mean that 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 would be minus 1 over 12 zeta function can just be extended to negative integers but zeta of s is equal to the sum for n in naturals of 1 over n to the s only for 
the real only when the real value of s is greater than one we can just extend this function by something called analytic continuation but this definition this summation definition would only apply for the real value of s being greater than one likewise we can extend the gamma function to irrational numbers like pi or rational numbers like one over two but the shuffling cards definition will that only applies to positive integers i hope that you now have a clear picture of the gamma function and perhaps a faint idea of how you can extend functions and extend domains this is quite like what mathematicians do with analytic continuation the gamma function is actually an analytic continuation of the factorial and there's a theorem called the bohr mollerup theorem which i've linked in the description below which says that if you have this functional equation gamma of n equals n minus one times gamma of n minus one and gamma of one equals one and the fact that log of gamma of z or log of gamma of x or whatever you want to say is convex which is another definition then there's only one unique function satisfying all of these three properties and that's our beloved gamma function right here that marks the end of the video if you did enjoy the video leave a like and comment what you liked the most if you did not enjoy the video also leave a comment letting me know how i can improve i'm always open to hearing your suggestion please don't forget to subscribe and also hit the bell notification so that you can get notified whenever I post. I also have an Instagram page where I post notes regarding theory in mathematics. If that is interesting to you, please do consider following that as well. My at is creative underscore math underscore.